brought us here? What is our interest in 2012? Well, first, we have lit our candle for peace. And now we say we light this light for global peace and interspiritual unity. In the name of our beloved Father, Mother, God Supreme, who creates life. In the name of the risen Christ, who loves life. In the name of the Spirit of the Supreme, who is the Divine Feminine, the fire of life. In the name of Gaia, our beloved Earth Mother, for she nurtures the Divine in all of creation and the animal kingdom. And in the name of all faith traditions and none, for they too are the sons and daughters of a loving God. In truth, they are our brothers and sisters. And we now celebrate our spiritual diversity as we honor the Supreme in all present. And as we begin, we shall turn the lights down and just to make it a little bit more relaxing and easy on the eye. And the track of music I'm playing for you was a piece of music composed for me. Oh, it could be about 10 years ago now. And it was composed by a wonderful soul musician in Canada to my date of birth. And as my date of birth is the 21st of December, and the influx of energy of Christ Consciousness is the same day, 2112. I've been guided to play it because of the beautiful resonance of heart energy. And for those who know about Christ Consciousness and 2012, it is a reawakening of the heart. It is the heart's epiphany, the heart coming to full circle, back into alignment with the Supreme, infused by the influx of light from the wonderful, beautiful Cosmic Christ. I would like us to just relax now for a moment and just quietly remind ourselves that we are a beloved of the Supreme, that you and me were not here by chance. It was ordained for us to be here and we were invited to be in this lifetime as we approach the dawn of Aquarius we agreed to it as part of our sacred contract and that's why we're here we are holding the light for the cosmic Christ and having surrendered our heart this evening this morning we will focus briefly on beauty, sensing the beauty of creation. And as an interspiritual Franciscan, whose spirituality is underpinned by Celtic and Franciscan spirituality, it seems right and it's appropriate to honor my faith tradition and the tradition of the ancient ones who've gone before me. Because I see Celtic Franciscan spirituality that embraces all faiths as being an important vehicle for the transmission 
of Christ consciousness. Because as interspiritual Franciscans, we embrace the supreme in the cathedral of nature. So let us come to nature now and find a place that's beautiful for us. Find a special place where we have many fond memories. It may be in Glendalough where Mary in Dublin has found much respite and meaningful support. It may be for Brother Tom sat watching the sea at Cape Cod, for Miriam down in New Zealand, it could be beholding the breath of the beautiful mountains and landscape at Dunedin. It may be something quite different, but I know for me it's walking through the woodland nearby and going to the two tall, tallest trees. They're about 40 foot in height and standing with my hands touching each one and connecting with Gaia, Mother Earth and the tree divas and feeling the love of nature the love of the Supreme flowing down through the seven branches, down through my heart, out through the seven roots of my tree of life. Find that place this evening, this morning, and just rest there a while, and just behold the beauty, the beauty of creation for it's central to embracing the Supreme. First, let us use our gift of free will to ask the Supreme to send the company of heaven so that we can engage with the messengers of love, that we can engage with our spiritual teachers, and our favorite saints, whoever they may be. It may be the little flower Saint Therese. It may be Francis of Assisi, Padre Pio, Corrie ten Boom, Hildegard. It may be Sri Chimoy, Gandhi, the Lord Buddha even, or Paramahanda Yogananda, maybe Rumi. Just sit in your favorite spot and I want you to feel the love of Gaia, the love of the beings from the nature realm, with the love emanating from Brother Sun and Sister Moon, touching you, caressing you. So let us focus on our first embrace as we relax, we become aware of who we are as a child of the Beloved. And now we take a non-labored deep breath and we hold it. And now we release any tension, any fear, any sadness, confusion, even doubt about the mystery of 2012. And just stay in that place, connecting to the rhythm of your own breathing. And feel the love of the cosmic Christ who has called you by name. And in the stillness, let us reawaken our soul's DNA 
Yes, because we came into this incarnation with all the information we need about 2012. And though many light bringers of peace ask the meaning of 2012, it says a lot to my heart when they ask what is the significance of this time. They have clearly A, not surrendered their heart, and B, more importantly, they have not asked the I Am Presence within them to explain to them the significance of this important time. And if you have any reservations or there's confusion, you have a duty of care to ask your heart, your teacher, to explain to you what this date means for you as a beloved of God. It doesn't matter what I say or do or think. What matters is what does your heart say to you? That is pivotal in our understanding of this absolutely amazing time in our evolution as man, as woman, and a child of God. So let us just sit back now and enjoy the stillness of where you are and look at the view and the beauty. And now I'd like to share with you some thoughts on why beauty has such an important part to play in understanding the sense of beauty in relation to 2012. But first, I need a drink. I'm so dry. Excuse me. First, I would like to read to you a reflection. In ancient times, the love of the beauty of the world had a very important place. In men's thoughts and surrounded the whole of life with marvelous poetry. Today, one might think that the white races had almost lost all feelings for the beauty of the world and that they had taken upon them the task of making it disappear from all the continents where they have penetrated with their armies, their trade and their religion. As Christ said to the Pharisees, Woe to you, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and they that were entering in ye hindered. And that's interestingly taken from St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 52. What I want to share with you is something more poignant about the sense of beauty from the perspective of creation spirituality in relation to 2012. How did the rose ever open its heart and give to this world all its beauty? It felt the encouragement of light against its being. Otherwise, we all remain too frightened. And that's from Haviz. It felt love. Beauty heals. Beauty inspires. Beauty 
is often a name we give the divine. Modern Western culture has often forgotten this truth. Would you agree? When we do, we pay a price such as the willful destruction of beauty and the craving for pseudo-beauties that an addictive culture wishes to seduce us into. Among the most ancient peoples, Beauty is experienced in the simplest personal form. And my notes tell me that through the rituals persons give birth to, to whether it is the clothes and costumes with which one fashions one's body for festivals and celebrations, or is it the personal offerings made in ritual prayer to Brahman in India? In Bali, the simplest people are busy making beautiful altars and dressing beautifully and gathering food and arranging its beauty all day long. Beauty rules in some cultures. Beauty is involved in the most ancient of spiritual writings on earth, such as those from ancient Kemet in Egypt. In Egypt around 1550 BCE, hymns were created to the god Aaron, sorry, Aten. Beauty plays a great role in their phrase. Beautiful you rise, O eternal living God. You are radiant, lovely, powerful. Your love is great, all-encompassing. Nour you nourish the hearts by your beauty. One lives when you cast your, way, your rays. Every land is in festivity. And again, beautiful you rise in heaven's horizon. O eternal living creator. When you have risen in eastern horizons, you fill every land with your beauty. You yourself are lifetime. One lives by you. All eyes are on your beauty until you set, or labor ceases when you rest in the West. The beauty we've been sharing with you has a connection with 2012. We know from going back several years now to the harmonic convergence in 1978 the world, Gaia, the nature spirits and the animal kingdom have been preparing for this powerful moment. And haven't you noticed the beauty of creation, especially now in the fall or in the autumn? Creation is unfolding majesty in the diverse color of its leaves. Only this morning, while I was out walking the dogs along my favorite little pathway, it's like a tunnel of trees on the old railway line at the bottom of our village. There was a gust of wind only for a few seconds and suddenly I was covered in leaves and the sun's rays were shining through the trees that had some leaves, and it was so beautiful. And in that instant, you could sense the beauty of creation. But nature is preparing herself. She's showing off her best right now, because she is rejoicing with you and me. She's preparing her celebration. 
and she's wanting to be a part of our celebration. But sadly, mankind has dismissed nature as secondary. And what is so tragic that man has only a 50% stake on earth. The other 50% is nature and the animal kingdom. So instantly we have an imbalance of energy. And that's why you and I are being prepared right now to bring back the diaphragmatic energy of the divine Christ, the cosmic Christ, and the Divine Feminine, Magdalena. Let us now come to a safe place where we are in our oasis and let us call on the Cosmic Christ. Let us call on His beloved Magdalena let us invite them to come to us. Let us ask them now to empower us to self-heal. To self-heal the violence that we may have committed to ourselves and to nature. But first I ask you to take a deep in-breath and hold it and now release. And in your next in-breath, I would like you to invite the Cosmic Christ and Magdalena to come to you. And we thank you, beloved Christ and Magdalena for coming into our space. Just look to the horizon of your oasis and just picture a ball of light coming towards you. And that light is no ordinary light. It is the Christ light. And as it's now right in front of you, as you open your eyes, you can see the face of the Cosmic Christ. Just picture that face. The face could be black or white. Just picture a face that's right for you, that resonates with your belief. But this is the Cosmic Christ. And with him, this is Twin Flame. And they draw up a seat in front of you, facing you. And their knees are touching your knees. So there is no escape. No escape. And something is happening. It's like as if your knees have been locked to the knees of the Christ and Magdalena. And you cannot move. And I sense the reason for this is because you and I have run away from facing our truth. We have run so fast that we've made ourselves ill. But now we are still. And the Christ is looking at us with a gentle smile. And his energy is empowering us to take back our power. Take back our power as a beloved as an Olympian of peace and to end the violence 
that we commit to ourselves, where we doubt, where we doubt the true power and majesty of the I am presence within us. And as the Christ looks at you, you are challenged to ask yourself, why do I run away? Why do I run away? And now Magdalena, her love for you, is inviting you to embrace the feminine energies of God and allow the feminine energy of God flow through every vein and artery of your being. And the Christ is inviting you to receive the masculine energy in balance with the feminine energy. And suddenly your heart is in alignment with Christ consciousness, which is love. The heart exploding with love. And suddenly you invite the Christ and Magdalena back into your heart, back into your life. And you are given a glimpse of 2012. And when you lay your head on your pillow, you will ask the Christ to take you to his etheric retreat and there explain to you in your subconscious state what should I understand that's relevant for my ascension? What is it that I should listen to and look out for as part of my ascension process? And now you feel a wave of love flowing into every part of you. And it's a love you cannot explain. It's a deep love. It's an ethereal love. It is the I am presence being reawakened within you. Just stay with that for now. I am a child of God. I am loved for who I am. For who I am. I am loved. I am accepted. And as you open your eyes, you realize that Jesus and Magdalena have left you a gift. You may not see it, but it's coming to you. And it will come to you when you retire and rest your weary head on your pillow and then use your gift of free will and invite the Cosmic Christ to take you on a different journey. A journey into the spiritual realms of truth where your soul's DNA will be reactivated as they were before you were born. And you will see and you will feel and you will understand the importance of you asking rather than me telling you. It is so important that we ask 
so that we receive rather than expect another to tell us so that we can rubber stamp it and dismiss it. That is so disrespectful. And many are guilty of that because of the nanny state we live in. People today want instant news fast. You cannot have instant access to the magnitude of 2012 because it's six dimensional energy. You will burn alive. You have to gradually grow into it. You have come from third into fourth dimensional energy and you are ascending upwards. But it must be done like a little helpless babe learning to walk. Otherwise its bone structure won't take the weight of its little body. So it is in the spiritual life. And we must not rush it. And we must not become impatient. Because at the end of this there is the most beautiful vision that you could ever visualize for yourself because it is truth and you already know it so go into that place as soon as you can and there you will receive a gift I promise you that I promise you once you ask you will receive but it is your place to ask, not mine, for you. I empower you to open your heart to love. Be still now. Be still. And all will be well. Be still.